right, everybody. Thank you for hopping on the FFL Sky Point, Sky's the Limit call. Um, we have a brand new agent that's killing it in the field. His name is Michael Ratliff. What's going on, Mike? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing real good, man. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I think you're, it's kind of your reception is a little a little off for a minute, but uh, we'll go ahead. And get, or is it good? Yeah, it's good now. Okay. So, Mike, man, uh, hey, glad to have you on this call, bro. I'm super proud of you. I've been knowing you since you were a little kid. So, uh, um, you know, this is about to be a funny interview. But um, tell us a little bit about your background, Mike. Where'd you come from? Man, originated. Um, I, 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 I hooped back in college a little bit um, as far as like sales and things like that. Um, I, I used to run a call center um, before, after that, I recently had a trucking company, um, you know. Okay, cool. So the call center, what kind of car, what kind of call center was it? Were you guys doing, you guys doing, tell us, you guys doing sales? What was that? So the call center was telesales, man, all telesales. We had a big bullpen, um, agents in there. Uh, we did a little bit of a uh, student loan forgiveness uh, back in the day. Um, but yeah, it was all telesales, strictly over the phone sales, one call closes, um, strictly commissioned for the agents uh, type of situation. Oh, okay. So pretty, <laughs> it's dang near the same exact thing you're doing now, right? Yeah, man. It's pretty much the same thing. Not much changed. <laughs> all right. Plug and play. So you, you, you then transitioned to owning a trucking company. Yeah. How did that, how did that happen? um you want the you want the short version or the long version short version short version uh, as a kid man i had a aau coach he owned a trucking company he did very well for himself um, so kind of when the pandemic kind of came about um the only thing i saw on the road when everybody you know nobody was driving or going to work was trucks um, so i did a little bit of research man and i just dived into it i mean i understood it was it was a recession proof um, resource and it always was like something that i, I went to kind of tap into so I just dove head first into it and, and got it started, got all the way up to about 16 trucks. Nice. Um, and, and, you know, I, I did my thing in a short amount of time. Good, man. So I remember when you started that trucking company too. <laughs> so and that's, 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 that's hilarious. I remember uh, when you were starting a trucking company, I was trying to get you to come on down here with us. Yeah. So, you, were to, you were trying to recruit me. <laughs> so what made you, cause you're, I mean, last month was your first month. Yeah. Last month was your first month selling insurance, never sold insurance before. No, nothing. What made you come? What made you come on board? I guess you would say you're persistent. You know, um, I just I, I just thought, like, man, let me give it a try. Um, you know, with the state of, of trucking and everything like that, it's a very stressful industry um, and it wasn't sales anymore. And I just. I've sold my whole life, man. Even like we've had conversations is back to my childhood. I used to sell, you know, I see you got kicks in the background. I used to sell shoes um, right. and things like that. So I'm like, man, why not? Like it's life insurance. Um, it can't be that hard. You know, it's something that people need, especially in the industries where I've come from, where things that we were selling is difficult and, and I was successful at it. So I was like, man, I'm gonna just give it a try. I, I, I see Bruce is doing really well at it. Um, so, I mean, how could I lose? Right. So, I mean, it, it, so when you were younger, one thing about you, you were always persistent as well. Mm -hmm. So I remember when you were, you know, when you were about 16, 17 years old, you were passing out flyers because we, we owned, a, I owned a carpet cleaning business at that point. Yeah, he was like, hey, man, I need to make some money. <laughs> so <laughs> I needed some money, man. I remember uh, one time, um, I said, hey, man, just start knocking on doors and see if we can, you know, come and clean our carpet and I'll give you a commission. I shouldn't have never told you that, bro. <laughs> I shouldn't have never told you that because, man, at that, I mean, at that young age, knocking on doors, getting carpet cleaning clients to have me come in there and clean their carpet. Man, that's the skill, bro, that you yeah. possessed when you were young. So, you know, fast forward into now. Okay, now you're selling insurance. Are you looking to build a team? What's what's that? What's that looking like? Yeah, man, I'm definitely looking to grow and, and build a team. Um, 
I've kind of come, I come from sports, so I'm always enjoyed the team environment, enjoyed the camaraderie and, you know, leading uh, from the front. So I definitely look to build a team and build a large team at that. Okay. That's what's up, man. So now you're selling insurance, you're building a team. What kind of, what, what takeaways, what have you learned in your first month about selling insurance? Man, don't overcomplicate this stuff. It's not, it's, it's, it's actually simple. Um, I'll say when I first came in, I remember like, I'm, yo, Bruce, man, this, yo, Bruce, this, and you're like, man, this is, you're making it too difficult. And I, I think it just clicked for me one day. And I think I called you like, yeah, this is not as difficult as I've been making it. Um, so just I mean, make it simple. At the end of the day, you know, we're not, we're not selling anything. We're, we're, we're helping families and we're walking them through a process. And I think once I really understood that, uh, it clicked for me. And I just, you know, I didn't look back. And that's what's up, bro. Too. I remember, I remember that phone call. I was like, dude, you are just totally overthinking this. A couple of days later, bro, you just start exploding cell after cell. I'm like, what the heck was that? You know, <laughs> but, um, hey man, that was, that. I mean, but to see, you know, your progress through your first month was very interesting. How were you selling? Were you doing any face-to-face? What were you doing? I mean, all telesales. I mean, you know, um, I come from that background, so my mindset was like, if, you know, I could sell the things that I've sold over the phone, then life insurance should, should be a breeze. And once I really kind of understood it, and I say a breeze, but once I understood it, I was able to be successful with it. Um, so I'm just telesales, man. I'm hitting the phones daily, you know, 300 to 400 calls. I think that three to 350 is, is the, like the sweet spot for me. Um, and then taking live transfers. Okay, perfect, man. So you're making a bunch of outbound calls. Yeah. And you're calling it just one call close and taking live transfers. One call close the outbounds and then live transfers, man. Just being consistent. Right. I mean, it's to tell you the truth, it's just a work day. That's all it is, bro. Like, like I tell, I tell agents all over the place, man. If you have a if you have a consistent schedule, there's no way that you don't sell one or two a day. And and I think that's one of the things that was that was really big for me, um, was just being consistent and kind of, you know, you give me that same advice too, like, hey do the same thing every day, have a consistent schedule. Like you're going to get up and start calling at this time, do that every single day and be consistent and you'll see the results. And I, and I seen it in my first month. That's what's up, bro. So um, I believe it was 27 families, bro. So great job on that, bro. Like, appreciate it. Appreciate and, it. And you know, I, I, I kind of, I wanted you to beat my record, but you couldn't, I, I, you, you know, know. So, you know. <laughs> I'm going to double it the next month. I, I'm quite <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> That's one thing about you, Mikey. I don't, I do not doubt your work ethic at all. And I never have. So, um, let me ask you this. What is your schedule looking like? What, what is your day-to-day schedule when do you sell? When do you build? What is that looking like? So the way I got it set up is I, I blocked off the schedule about five hours in the morning. Um, so between, what is that, like 8 to 9 a.m. Because I have a little one, so I drop her off at school every morning at 8. Then I'm coming home to get on the calls, and I'm working for that, you know, that five hours of just of just selling. Strictly selling, you know, I'm not trying to take any calls, anything else as far as selling. After that, I'll, I'll get a little bit of food and get, you know, get some me time for a quick second. And then I'm straight to building for the rest of the evening. Um, and I've been sticking to that, you know, day in and day out. Um, and it's and it's starting to, you know, it's starting to pick up some momentum. Man, that's what's up, bro. So for the first half of the day, you're pretty much selling the last half of the day. You're you're building a team. Yeah, I'm selling from like nine to one o'clock. Um, and then from there, I'll get something to eat real quick. Um, just take a second to myself and then kind of change my mindset to, to the building and, and, you know, talking in with these agents and people and getting them into, you know, recruiting them over to the team. Right. That's what's up, bro. So, you know, very, inter- very interesting. You and I, we were talking a couple of days ago and we were going over your list of hires, bro. We counted 31. Yeah. 31. 31 in your first month. What? What the heck is going on with that, bro? Um, I would say just consistency um, and just, you know, talking to these agents and just, I mean, what we have to offer over here is is a lot more than anybody else. So, you know, when you really kind of dive into that and the opportunity that they have here, um, it's it's a no-brainer, honestly. Right. So what are, what are kind of like the highlights that you're telling a new agent 
Like uh, what, what is the big thing that you're telling an agent on the reason why they should join us? I mean, our commission uh, opportunity here was, was just a commission. I mean, a lot of these agents are coming from 35, 40, 50 percent um, and they can't grow versus here. You're coming in 90 to 100 percent and you have the opportunity to grow and build a team at that. Um, and once really people are like, you know, we kind of talk numbers or, or what they may be doing over there versus if they were doing that same thing or even better here, what their numbers would look like. It's, I mean, magic. You know, one equals two. Exactly. It's <laughs> magic. Because at the end of the day, when I tell, when I talk to new, when I talk to new recruits, you know, just like what you just said, like, I, 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 okay, so how, what are you doing over there? How many families are you protecting? Okay. You're protecting seven at a 40% comp. Seven families at a 40% cop, how much you're making? Oh, I'm making this much. Okay, so if you were here, you would be making this, this much, much if you per- same exact thing. It's, now, at this crazy. point, sorry to cut you off. It's crazy when, when you when you do that and you break it down with them, their eyes get big and you can just tell the excitement. And it's to me, they 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 want to come over and, and do more versus just doing enough maybe to get by over there because it's like they have to work so hard at that 40%, 35%, 50%. I don't like I'm motivated to work hard because I'm going to see double the money. Correct. Correct. And and that's that's exactly what happens. Because when a new agent comes here, they instantly get a pay raise. Yeah. Instantly get a pay raise. And another thing I like to point out is do we we train more than everyone in the industry. Like literally there's almost just within our group, you know, uh Skypoint down. There's like 20 different trainings a week and you could just choose your poison, you know? So there's literally about 20 different trainings a week. And another good thing about, you know, us and family first, we help everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I'm quite sure if you reached out to somebody else outside of our group, they're going to help you just like yeah, every, everybody. Is, it's, it's, I mean, it's not to say it sound cliche, but it's family first. Like we're, we're a family here and everybody's very, you know, they, they answer questions. Nobody's like, Hey, this guy's not on my team. Like everybody is, it's a great commodity. And you know, I appreciate it. And everybody I, I can text or I can call. If I can't get to you, I can get to somebody else. And, you know, everybody wants to see somebody succeed. And that's, that's really dope. Right. So what's your man? So what's your mind frame on building? What are you looking at? Are you looking to, you know, just build a team and sustain, or you're looking to go colossal. And I'm, I'm a competitive individual, man. So uh, I'm, I'm either go big or go home. So colossal is, is definitely, you know, what I'm aiming for. Um, and, and that's what I'm coming for. That's what's up, bro. Like, um, I know, I remember, you, you know, you and I kind of started off very similar. You know what I mean? Like, you were, you, while you were studying for the tests, you were already building. Yeah. And see, so you you did one better than me. You got, you passed on the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it took me four times to pass that dang old thing. I was one and done, man. You, you know, I wasn't trying to take that test too many times. <laughs> man, bro, I guess I got, I, I got overly educated. <laughs> but, you know, like, so I was doing the same thing, though. Like I was, while I was, while I was studying for the test, I was talking to everybody that I knew. Come on over here. Come on over here. Come on over here. Has that been your same pretty much approach? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I let everybody know what I'm doing, you know, what my goals are. I'm a big believer. If you talk to people um, about what you're doing, you never know who you may come across and just in, in crossing at the gym or getting a bite to eat or just talking to the family and friends. So I let everybody know, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm into now. If you're interested, if you're looking for opportunity, you know, here's the course or come on over. If you know somebody, bring them over. Um, Every day, man, they're going to get tired of hearing it from me, but I'd rather you hear it than not. I don't want to miss any opportunities. Absolutely. So you're already paying a staff. Mm -hmm. You're already paying a staff and you're about to get off as soon. Mm Mm-hmm. So why do you think paying a staff is so important? Because there's only so much I can get done in a day. You know, so if I'm able to duplicate myself one, two, three times, I mean, look how much faster I could grow, much how much further my reach goes. Um, so and it's, and it's, I mean, it's an investment into my business, an investment into myself, you know, paying that 
paying, okay, I have a recruiter or I have this person. Like I can only do so much because the first half of the day I, I need to sell. Right. So, you know, if you want to quickly get to something, then you got to, you know, you got to, you got to shorten that curve. Right, man, that's strong, bro. Um, like I said, bro, like the, the way that I started off is pretty much similar to exactly what you're doing right now. Like, man, I'm happy to see it. So what, what can you, what do you think you're going to do differently this month, your second month? What you didn't do your first month? Invest more. Talk about that a little. Leads. Um, I, I kind of know what to do now, so it's just like, okay, I'm just gonna double down. I'm, I'm gonna put more money in the sense behind the machine, which is me, and and invest more into myself, invest more leads, and then and then you know continue to help families and you know ask for referrals and things like that. Well, ask for referrals. That's strong, bro. Like, what do you? How do you feel about that? Like what's up with the referrals i mean so the referrals is i mean that's that's word of mouth that's the best marketing you can ever have if i help a family and they refer me two three four five people they already i already have a direct link into them because i help somebody they know so they can give a good hey this guy helped me out he was great he was very knowledgeable um they're already going to call ahead so they already expect my phone call you know to me it's a that's a alley -oop. Man, that's strong, bro. So um, referral business, man, I, I love referral business because yeah. you can you can sell five families and ask for three, three referrals and five times three is 15 people. Yeah. And that's just literally warm market. You just know, that, market. It's your the, best market. It's quick. Exactly. And you're just hopping into someone else's network. That's strong, bro. That's really strong. So 27 families the first month, 31 hires the first month, bro. I don't know, like that. What what were your goals for this month? Um, to definitely outdo that. I, I want to outdo myself every month, you know. So I don't want to set a cap, but if I outdo myself every single month, then I'm always going to continuously grow. Wow, bro, that's that's strong. So I remember uh, my first month selling insurance. I think I protected like 30 families, 31 or something like that, 30 or 31 families. And, and my second month was a very strange month for me. Let me tell you why, bro. Because that second month I had ended up getting an office. I had hired like four staff, you know, and, you know, trying to train staff, you know, also get the office set up and everything else. And that second month, bro, I only did like 12,000 because I was literally all over the place. Right. Literally all over the place. So I think, you know, the best advice that I could give you in your, in, you know, in your second month is, you know, continue with your schedule because that's something that I did not do. Right. My schedule immediately changed. Right. You know, and, and you know, I, would, I, I didn't understand that. I was just like, okay, we got to go here, 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 here. I was just all over the place. Just continue with your schedule. Just like you said, man, like, you know, if you can duplicate yourself, you have more reach. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think just to piggyback on what you're saying and what's big, is just, you know, creating systems and processes, you know, so you can stick to that. You stick to these systems, you stick to these processes as you even grow in your schedule. Um, you don't waver, you know, you don't take that dip. Correct. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. Because when you have all of these different, when you have systems in play, things become to be autopilot -y, if that makes sense. <laughs> autopilot -y, pilot -y. Right. Because, I mean, in this business, you know, one thing that I learned about this business, if you can get it to go on autopilot, if you have, see, I, I believe in having different departments, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. okay, we got our recruiting department, we got our contractor department, you know, we have our, we have our, uh, our follow-up department, we have this, we have that. Well, I mean, there's different departments for everything. And what I do is I like to just oversee the whole thing and then make sure my personal job and my personal work gets done. That right. I do. Exactly. So, um, you know, with, with you, um, I seen you busy all month last month. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, talk a little bit about, you know, getting new agents onboarded and having them write fast because you had two new writers this week. 
Yeah. That's two new writers this week. You know, what are you kind of saying to them to get them going fast? Man, attack your one market. You know, go after those, your mom, your dad, your mom's best friend, your dad's best friend. You know, if you have any siblings, their best friends, aunts, uncles, just attack your warm market. I, I would say take the mentality. I mean, we were all in, in grade school. You know, we had to uh, we had to do the fundraiser, and we <laughs> we reaching out to our aunties and our uncles. Hey, can you buy the popcorn? Buy the Girl Scout cookies? Have the same approach. You know, if your family supports you, I mean, at the end of the day, it's life insurance. They need it. So have that same approach and attack your warm market quick. And they'll be riding quickly and then they'll get that that commission bug and once they have that commission bug you know then they're they're all ears and they're going to listen and, and they're going to do you know what you say and what you ask because you you help them make money very quickly and a lot of times it's more money than they've seen um a month at times right right so pretty much you're pretty much attacking one market straight out the gate mm-hmm. and that, that also give them good training as well Good training. They'll be able to to go through the applications. They'll be able to mess up with with grandma or auntie that doesn't care because that, you know they're their little baby. So it's okay. It's not a big deal. But now the mistakes they would have made on you know the leads that they paid for, they make it with their warm market. So now when they get to those leads, they're prepared. They have experience with the applications. They have experience with the quotes. They know how to pivot and do those things. Awesome, man. Awesome. So if you have so if you so pretty much every new agent attack war market after about a week or two, you tell them to buy leads and uh, yeah, about start start going through the system. Yeah, I like I want to have everybody do the same exact thing. You know, have right. the same thing. Come in immediately attack war market. Now you get to kind of get take your bumps and bruises and, and kind of figure things out. And then you have, you know, you have commission, you're paying, you have money in your pocket now to go purchase leads. Hmm. So pretty much house money. House money. They're not, yeah, they're, it's house money. Now you take that money and you invest it into leads and now you're just flipping house money in a sense. <laughs> That's dope. So um, how's it been for you with leads? Like, what's your lead spend? How much did you spend on leads last month? Last month, man, I honestly, I did about, uh, worth about 750, uh, to a thousand a week. Um, and, and I feel like I got a really great return from that. Um, so, you know, that's, I mean, I look at it as an investment, you know, you have to be willing to spend money. You have to be willing to, to, to spend money, to make money. Um, so if you're holding right. on to like, I'm just going to work, you know, I'm only going to spend this amount and I'm just going to work this list. Like you're, 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 you're hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself. You're, you're cheating yourself, 100%. 100%. Like, you know, I, I tell I tell all new agents, okay, Bruce, I want to come in and I want to do all of this. And I want, how do I do it? Fall out of level, buddy, for, for one. The person that sits there and, and holds it tight, they squeeze that money, it's not going to go up. Listen, to me, the, the greatest quote that I heard, not a quote, but somebody told me, listen, your money is, is soldiers, they're little soldiers. You got to put it out there and let it work. And that's in the same sense. Okay, it's put it out there. Let it get you leads. Let those leads come in. And now you double your money, triple the money, and put it back out there and let it work for you. That's the objective of it. Let it work for you. It's, it, it, listen, have faith in what you can do. Have faith in the systems. And it's going to work. You're going to make the money back, plus more. Correct. A lot more. 100%. <laughs> because, man, I tell everybody, man, the, the averages on being an ex- a successful agent. Like you just said, bro, you know, I'm calling 300, your sweet spot is at 350 calls. Mm-hmm. Dude, if you sell one out of 350, bro, you do that average is like just that's ridiculous. One out of 350. Like, like if I shot 350 baskets and only made one, I should never be on a lot of allowed on a court. Yeah, we're gonna put the uh the paper that says don't allow him back in here. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but in insurance that's that's damn good why because you get paid 100 yeah. and if you did that faithfully for let's say 25 days out of a month one out of 350 our average is about a thousand yeah you know 
I, uh, this stuff. 25 families protected. I mean, 25 yeah. families protected. You know, so, and, I, and I think what happens is people have to take that mentality and lose like, oh, I, I, I got to do this. Like, yeah, this is just set it up. This is what you have to do. And this is just it. If you if you want X, Y, and Z, you have to do this. You got to call the 300, 350 people a day. You know, you got to spend the money on leads. You got to set that time aside to, I'm only going to do this. No, I'm not about to go. I'm not going to be on my phone looking at this or playing games. I'm going to dedicate myself to my craft and do this for this period of time every single day, and you'll get the results. Correct. Correct. I mean, because at the end of the day, like I tell every agent, man, nothing's perfect, dude. Nothing's perfect. You can't control anything. The only thing you can control is yourself and your work ethic. Mm-hmm. It's, only, it's the only thing that you can possibly control is yourself and your work ethic. You cannot control the outcome of your day. You're not God, so don't play him. Don't play God. So at the end of the day, only thing you can, only, at the end of the day in life, only thing you can do is live it. You can't control yeah. it. Hey. So, so why in the world the are, that you can. <laughs> exactly. Like why in the world isn't people understanding that they can't control the outcome, but they do have to still do the work. Mm-hmm. Because without the work, guess what? No results. Without the work, you get no results. And all you're going to do is regret it. Oh, man, I wish I would have just, man, what if I would have worked hard this whole week? What would have happened? Right. 100%, man. Like, um, it's this, this industry is not about being the best at it. It's about being consistent. Like, you can be terrible. Terrible. Month in and month out. Terrible. But as long as the work ethic is there, you will still earn while you learn. Period. Yeah. Because you're you're providing something for people that they need, which is life insurance. You know, you're not you're not trying to. I don't know. You're not trying to build. Hey, I want you to. I want you to let me build uh, this piece of property in the back of your house, and you got to be this great salesman. Like it's it's life insurance. People need this. People die every day, and it's unfortunate, but it's a fact. You're only going to get two things in life: your you know your birth date and your death date. Sure. That's, that's the guarantee. So you you don't have to be this crazy salesman that has to lock these people in and all that. Like, hey, the people that want life insurance, you can be terrible or you can be great. As long as they're getting at a price that they can afford and they feel comfortable with, they're going to sign up with you. 100%. 100%. Because you're taking something and you're putting it in their face. You're taking something and you're putting it in their face and make, having them make an informed decision. There's only two reasons why you have a no sale. And that's because there's three reasons. One, because they're uneducated. Number two, they don't like you. Number three, it's the price. So it's your job as an insurance agent to decipher which one is it. And I would ask a client, okay, is it? Okay, so you do understand the importance of insurance. Yeah. Okay, that cancels that. Okay, so is it me? Did, Did I say something wrong or do you not like me? No, you've been great. Okay, so it has to be the price. It has to be the price. Yeah, Bruce, you know, right now. Okay, perfect. Well, you know what? Let's at least put something in place. Let's at least put something in place because guess what? A little of something is better of none of nothing. Mm -hmm. A little of something is better than none of nothing. So let's put this in place. And let's say once your financial situation turns around, you can always go up or you can always go down. You can never cancel, but you can go up, you can go down. Call me, I'm your insurance person for life. Yeah, 100%. Period. I mean, because there's only three reasons. Majority of the time, you hit it on the head. It's 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 price. <laughs> it's it's price. price. It's, it's most of the time, it's price. Yeah, it's always price. Like, you know, like, I'm not afraid to sit here and and, and quote somebody, okay, for $200,000, you are looking at three twenty nine dollars a month. For $150,000, you are looking at two ninety eight dollars a month. For $150,000, you are looking for two thirty six dollars a month. Oh, I'm not afraid of that. Right. But guess what? If they landed at $30 a month, a dollar a day, I'm going to make sure they have insurance. I'm, it's not always going to be a freaking home run out of the park. Your job is to protect the family. Yeah. That's your job. Protect the family, and it's okay to get on base. <laughs> exactly. It's okay to get on base, man. You know, you don't got to. You can get on base. You, so, 
make your way make your way to home base. One hundred percent, because that's it. Because that second that second base run could have been everything that you needed. Yeah. So um, I like that. Just get on base. Just get on base. That's very important, man. Like especially in the world of sales. This isn't really sales, but in a world of sales, man, just do your job. I tell people this, man. Uh, I say, Bruce, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, sales is not my thing. Dude, yes, it is. Because you're always getting sold something. You are. Like, I got sold this hat, this shirt, this desk, that TV, all of those shoes, all of it. Like, I've gotten sold a million times, but guess what? I've sold a million times as well. So it's either you be the sold or you be the seller. And no matter what, even the seller is being sold. Everything in this world is a sale. It is. Everything. Like the couch that people sit on all day, the computer that they're looking at working off of, the house. I I mean, everything that you do is a sale. It's a sale. And most people don't see the sale because you didn't, somebody didn't physically come to you and sell the computer, but you saw the commercial that promoted it. So you went and bought it. You just didn't know you were being sold. And that's what most people, they don't want to know they're being sold. <laughs> Talk a little bit more about that, man. That's <laughs> they, they don't want to, they, as long as they feel like, you know, they may know it, but as long as they don't feel pushy or feel like you're pushing them towards something or your salesman, you just, you just got to walk them down that lane. Exactly. You know, you just walk them down. Okay, perfect. And if you make it, especially if you make it seem like you, you kind of get them on a yes pattern and you make it seem like it's their decision, and it's things that they're telling you, okay, uh, you, what's the price that you're looking for? Oh, 50 to $70. Okay, perfect. So boom, I pull a quote. It's around that. Is this something that you're comfortable with? Yeah. We're just going to move forward. If they're looking to spend 50 and 70 and you're pushing them at 200. They're going to say bye every time. 100%. Every time. That's real. That's real. I mean, at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. People don't like to feel like they're being sold something. And walking through now to that's a perfect analogy because that's exactly what we're doing in insurance. You're just guiding them. Mm-hmm. You're not you're not selling something. Selling something is you know selling this phone or selling something that's tangible. This thing, the person that's eight times out of ten, the person that's paying for it will never see it. But you know, if they did have to see it, it was some type of terminal illness. But that's even protected, right? You're providing people with not only living benefits, but God forbid they pass on an accident, like double indemnity. Like there's so much in mm-hmm. insurance that you're getting. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I, I, I'm a big proponent. I'm a big proponent of I hate auto insurance. I always have and I always will. <laughs> I hate auto insurance. I really do. Because guess what? If a person has a $20,000 vehicle that they purchased. In about a year, that vehicle depreciates. Now it's worth about 12000 That's the blue book value of it. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Let's say if you had, a, let's say if on that vehicle, you had an interest rate, but you owe 17000 You owe, you owe 17000 The vehicle's only worth twelve. God forbid, boom, there's an accident. There's an accident. Your insurance company is only going to pay you that twelve grand. But you're paying for the 20. But you're paying for the rest. Unless you bought some type of gap insurance. But there goes insurance again. (laughs) There goes goes insurance again. Right? I hate auto insurance. What a passion. But I have to have it. Right? I have to have it. it. It's a law. But it should be, it should be a moral law. To have life insurance, especially when you're an adult that has a family. Mm-hmm. And Great. when I talk to clients, I make sure that they understand, yo, if you don't have life insurance and you're the head of a household, you're not, you're not the head of a household, you're a debt of the household. You are a debt of the household. Because once you pass away, guess what? You just gave your your, your whole family a big debt. Yeah, because everybody's depending on you, your income, what you're producing, all that. Take you out the equation. Now people are losing their home. They're losing their cars. Your family's out on the street. So they're asking to live at somebody else's house. All because you didn't prepare 
for what's coming. No matter what you do, you are going to pass away. It sucks. Nobody wants to think about it. It's an uncomfortable conversation. I get all that, but it's going to happen because you can't tell me somebody that's outlived death. <laughs> like it's going to happen. Everybody is going to come and they're going to go. So let's 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 talk about it. Let's be realistic and let's set up your family. So when it does happen, unfortunately, hopefully it's not too early that they're in position to still be able to live in the house that you provided for them. Correct. You know, go to the school in the good areas that you put them in. Correct. Correct, man. I mean, and at the end of the day, even if it's not price budget for someone, everybody can everybody can afford four quarters a day. Dang it. So when you walk out of a house with or walk out of a house or get off the phone with a no sale is because you did not do your job with explaining, put something in place now. Mm -hmm. It can it can it can be as low as 20 dang on dollars a month. That's 83 cents a day over the course of 30 days. And that's McDonald's like twice. Oh uh, not like McDonald's like once now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, at, at this point, it, it's just unrealistic, you know. So, um, I mean, you're, I'm, I'm really proud of you, Mike. Uh, you come along, you come a long way from, you know, you know when I met you as a as a young kid. You know what I mean? And I used to kill you on a basketball court. Oh, uh, I knew he was going to get on here and say this nonsense, guys. Don't listen to him. Yeah. Hey, you were a little kid. You had an excuse. It's okay. I can't touch you now, though. I will say that. I always will be, and I always was a bucket. <laughs> well, um, what advice would you give to brand new agents or existing agents on uh, building their business very quick and selling a lot of insurance very quick? What advice would you give them? Invest, man. Invest. Um, invest in the staff and invest in your leads and just create a schedule, man, um, and stick to it. Even if you have those days where it's like, man, I didn't get nothing done. I didn't sell or I didn't get an agent hired. Like trust the process and, and stick to it because you're going to have more wins than losses. Um, so invest and just, you know, trust the process and, and, and invest, man. I'm going to keep saying those two things. That's the process and staff, invest. The staff is going to take you further than you can take yourself. And, and I result that to like sports. Like, man, you can... You as a, a one person on a five man team, you can only go so far. But if you have a team behind you that all has the same dream and the same goal, um, and you guys are working towards it together, you're gonna go much further. Um, and that's that's just the biggest thing, man. Don't be afraid to invest um, into a staff, and don't be afraid to have that overhead and that pressure because that pressure is also gonna so it'll make you or break you. Now you know you have to pay this money every single month. You're gonna go out there and protect more families. Yeah, 100%. You know, I got to make this much to cover the staff. And after that is money for me. So I need to do this. It's going to push you a little bit harder. It's okay to put pressure on you. Right. 100%, man. Like, uh, that's healthy pressure, in my, mm -hmm. in my opinion. That's healthy pressure. Um, we'll open the call up for some Q&A. Great job, Mike, man. I'm extremely proud of you. Appreciate it. We'll open up the call for some Q&A. If anybody has some questions, go ahead and drop it in the Q&A box. Um, Jonathan Avala, that's my boy. He said, let's get it, Mike. Um, Drayton Ford, how you doing, Drayton? Uh, Drayton asked, what leads are you buying? So I, I stick to mortgage protection. Um, it's kind of, I mean, I like mortgage protection because you know that these people have something. Um, they have a home. That means they're making some type of money to be able to afford that. and they have something worth protecting outside of, you know, their life. They also have a home that their family's living in. So I like mortgage protection. That's kind of what I go after. Um, that works best for me. I've, I've had success in that. Okay, perfect. Um, and he's, you're also doing some live transfers, right? Yeah, that and live transfers. Yes, of course, live transfers. Um, and you get... <laughs> you get a little mix of everything in life. <laughs> yeah. How's, the, how's live transfers been for you? Well, our chances are great, man. They're, they're, they're great. You know, uh, I, I do pretty well with them and they're kind of, they're kind of funny at times because you get some people that's just on there and it's like, yeah, this guy didn't listen to anything they had before they got on the phone with me, but 
you know, that for the most part, they're definitely good, man. Right, right. That's what's up, bro. Um, Benny C says, congrats on the great first month, Mike. Many more to come, Benny. That's my boy. Appreciate it. Uh, Miss Gina asked, have you been building your team since day one? If not, what was your schedule like prior to prior to breaking up your day between sales and building? She must have just got on, but you uh, got an answer. Um, so I've been, yeah, I've been building since, but, but I started building before I got licensed. So my schedule has been the same since I was able to, to you know, I, I got appointed with carriers um, five hours in the morning. And then the rest of the half of uh, the day is just building. So cool. Um, Kervin's Leon uh, asks, if you have a small budget, would you recommend age mortgage leads from the CRM? And if so, how many leads would you get? Um, if I had a small budget, I'm talking about one market to increase that budget um, because I'm sure there's people that have not been dug into. Um, but to, you said small budget recommend age mortgage leads. Um, yeah, man, you can't go wrong with age mortgage leads. I mean, at the end of the day, if they have a mortgage, then they have something to protect outside of their own life. And they have some type of money. You have to be able to make money. You have to be making money to be able to afford a mortgage. Correct. Um, and, then, and as far as how many I would get, uh, as much as I can. There we go. There we go. Because at the end of the day, you know, um, guys, I, I stress to everyone that, you know, leads are leads, guys. I mean, you're, you're going to get some duds and you're going to get some shrugs. I mean, it is what it is. Like, you know, I'm a big proponent of leads are not a sale. Leads are leading you to that destination of a sale. So, um, Curvins, if you, you know, if you, I mean, age mortgage protection leads are are are, are gold. No one, no one else is calling them. So when I first started, started selling insurance, you know, we would get, um, you know, brand new mortgage protection leads. And not only I'm calling, but, you know, these people fill out all types of stuff and send it in. So there's like eight other people calling, but with age mortgage protection leads, guess what? And no one, no, no one else is calling. Yeah, no one else about is calling. Them. Exactly. They're forgotten about. And even if they, you know, even if they do, um, Curbins, even if they do have, even if they do have insurance, hey, well, I will say, Mr. Customer, you know, great. Totally happy that you have mortgage protection, but I am the field supervisor. Uh, I'm going to come over so you can, so, so I can do an annual review. So I can do an annual review, make sure you have the right policy because you may qualify for more coverage with less payment. Does that make sense, sir? Okay, perfect. I'll be over it at, in the next 35, 45 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm very pushy. You know what I mean? Like when, when guys, when you guys are hopping on the phone, assume the sale, assume the sale. As soon as you hop on that phone, this is a sale. Even if they hang up on you, call them Maybe back. Because to piggyback on that, assuming it just in sales in general, I mean, all right, for example, if, if you just close the deal, I guarantee how you approach that next phone call, you're because it's it's you're gonna take that call very live. You're gonna be in a good mood, you're gonna be excited, you're gonna be like, okay, I'm about to close this next one. I'm I'm gonna get on the roll versus like if you just gotta know. You're going to take that differently. So assuming the sale every time is, hey, this is going to be a sale, it's going to give you a different vibration on that call. And they're going to be able to feel that. Yeah, that's real talk. That's real talk, bro. Like um, people, it's it's about energy. It's about energy. If you're on the phone, pretty much pretty, match your client's energy. Or you can give them energy, you know, so. You know, certain certain people they like to call, and you know they they like to sound like the the worker that that's underpaid and all stressed out. Um, which is not actually it's not a bad thing, you know what I mean? That's actually a good thing. But when I was when I was calling all day every day, I would call with energy, period, because I'm about to assume that sale. I'm about to get this. I'm about, I'm about to get it no matter what, even if they hang up on me. You know, the next call. You got to remember, you're going to get hung up on, you're going to get cursed out. And about the time you have your 27th call, guys, you're like, all right, this guy's going to curse me out too and hang up on me too. Or I'm going to hear a dial tone or I'm going to hear a voicemail. Uh, and by the 40th call, oh, you're done. You're just mentally, you're just done. So what I, the best advice that I would give everybody is this, always be up, never down. Because you got to protect your energy as well. 
And when you're mm-hmm. acting, when you're acting like, okay, I have no energy, guess what? It's going to end up being that, right? So you're going to miss that sale. 100%. Um, any more questions, guys? All right, Mike, what's your goal by this month, by the end of the month? Like I said, earlier, my goal by the end of the month is, is the top numbers I did last month. So we did 27 families, 31. I want to I wanna do more. I want to do 35, 40, 40 higher, you know, 35, 40, 40 families protected. There we go. There we go, bro. Hey, man, I'm ridiculously proud of you. Uh, God bless everybody on this call, man. And let's, and let's go up. Sky's the limit. Let's go.